I'll uh, I'll meet you outside in five minutes. Yeah. Um, basically, you've got because um, I got a new book coming out after yeah. Christmas called Agent Buried Alive. Right. And it's what's the significance of the title? Um, because a lot of my programming went on underground. I was kind of like buried alive. Like, in, what do you mean? What do you mean by underground? Literally, literally underground. in bases. Um, and what were those bases? The AL 499 in Berkshire. Grew up just near the base. Right. Now, well, that's what we've learned, been told by Barry King, mm. is the Peasmore base. Peasmore, that's it, yeah, Peasmore right. base. And uh, also the CLC1 facility underneath Westminster. Right. That stands for Compartmented Learning Centre 1. That's where they have a lot of remote viewers, remote influencing. I was there in 94. I mean, we've, we've always been told that the Americans and the Russians had all this remote viewing stuff mm. and the British really never did anything. So, yeah. can you elaborate about that? Well, the CRC1 base is, um, and the AL499 piece, well, they're run by the NSA, which is American right. intelligence. But the, so, um, what's the NSA doing right underneath you know, London? Um, I think they're in control of a lot of the bases in different countries. How do they get control of different? You know, how do they get control of bases in other sovereign states? I mean, we're meant to be an independent state. Right. Um, how, how does that? From my understanding, it was the National Security Act in 1947. Um, and, uh, right. Britain was part of that. Yeah. So I think everybody handed their ultimate powers over to the uh, American government in the National Security Act. Whoever was part of that. I know Britain was part of the National Security Act in 1947. I, mean a lot of I think the, when it comes to military bases, the Americans are running it in this country. Um, like I say, the CLC-1 yeah. underneath Westminster is controlled by the NSA. How far underneath Westminster? Um, and is it part of a larger complex underneath Westminster? Yeah, um, you've got to understand, Mars, when I was taken in the base, I was always drugged. Right. And I was in there, and so it, the memories of actually going in there are very blurry. I remember when I was in the base, um, there's a connection to another base underneath Parliament that supposedly got reptilians and greys in. Because um, there's a very powerful remote viewer that I know who's remote viewed the base underneath Parliament and has said he saw greys and reptilians there. I've seen non-human entities in bases over the years. Right. When you say they're not human, you're not necessarily saying an alien, they're just not. Uh, I saw human. strange animal types of creatures in cages. I'm not, it, possibly this is a continuation of Nazi super race projects, yeah. genetic creations, because uh, I know um, one of the sub projects of Mannequin that I was involved in was called the Tigris program. Yeah. And in that, they were taking modified animal DNA and injecting it into um, remote viewers, genetically enhanced espionage agents. Right. Okay, what have I seen? I've seen a lot over the years. First memory um, was in 1981. I was five years old. Yeah. And um, went to, I was at school in London. Uh, this is the middle of 1981. Um, I was driven up to the Greenham Common entrance uh, in a Ford Sierra. Yeah. And there was two guys in the front seat, and we drove up to the gates. Uh, the gates opened, and one of the guys turned around and said to me, they keep nuclear weapons here. And uh, from my understanding, that's actually a front. This uh, mind control operation, kidnapping children. Was this was in the middle of 1981 when I was taken in there. I was five years old. Yeah. Um, basically, the gates opened, and we drove in. Um, we drove along and we drove uh, down an underground road there, because that's called, that's codenamed the Bravo entrance to the AL-499 base. Yeah. Yeah. Drove down, drove down quite far to an underground car park, underground, and got out and there was a group of 15 other children there. Um, we were kind of huddled in the corner, but there's actually a military, a military truck parked opposite. Yeah. They're quite a big one, and then there was two, um, you know, like uh, you have a car park, you have a man in a booth, and he presses yeah. the button when the things come up. Yeah. There was two of them, because it was a two-lane road underground. There was one on each road. And they, they went further underground. Once they, the things opened, they let you in. Yeah. But we were, the 15 children, we were all huddled in the corner and given blankets. And then there was a door on the right, 
Um, and we were taken in, in the door on the right um, by military officers. We were taken in and it was like a, um, went through a corridor and there was like a um, classroom set in there, um, tables and chairs. And we sat down, we were all sat down. And we were given um, like puzzles, like geometrical shapes to put together. Yeah. And what, what they were doing there is we were all identified psychics. Um, because it was um, the Project Oak Tree in the 50s, was before Project Mannequin, that was a um, genetic bloodline study and that was run from Harwell Genetics Labs in Oxfordshire. Yeah. And that Which was is also connected to this base. Yeah, that, that's the Delta entrance, yeah. Harwell, that goes down to the AL 499. Harwell's where the Rutherford Appleton left the bar. Yeah, the Genetics Labs, yeah. yeah. But the um, Harwell genetic study was called Project Oak Tree, and that was connected to all the major hospitals in the country. It still is. They're still looking yeah. for psychic children. In other words, they're marking their medical records to check who's what. Yeah. How do they do that? Do you know how they do that? Is really um, I'm not exactly sure how they do it. Um, so you don't know what to look for in your medical records to see whether you've been identified as a... Well, a Barry King says it comes up on your records that you're part of a genetic, a government genetic survey, but it doesn't say what that survey is. Um, and all your medical records are actually routed through the NSA, through um, Harwell. Basically, they're looking for um, blue bloods, um, children of these bloodlines. Basically, I think you've got the... Um, the reptilians have high degrees of copper in their blood, um, so actually it comes out blue. Right. And it's uh, people with rhesus negative, they have massive amounts of copper in their blood. Um, they, they process oxygen, they process a lot more oxygen in the blood than the rhesus positive, and rhesus negative is very rare, it's about 4 or 5 percent of the population. Yeah. Um, and then the amount of oxygen you can process in the blood, that determines um, psychic ability. It's like in yoga and tai chi, yeah. the process in the oxygen in the blood that develops psychic abilities. Yeah. So basically these bloodlines are naturally psychic. Uh, again, Because we're running a low oxygen level atmosphere now, the, the, the Earth's atmosphere is much lower in oxygen than it used to be. Right, because they're trying to dampen down everyone's psychic abilities and yeah. bring the new world order in. So people aren't aware of it. The, the group of children that I was programmed with were all descendants of the tribe of Dan. Yeah. Um, again, just to explain a little bit about them, they come out of the Middle East at the time of the Exodus. Yeah. They went up to Greece where the Spartans, I mentioned that. And they went up to France uh, and other places in Europe. They were the Merovingian kings there, and other royal bloodlines. From there, they travelled up to Great Britain and Ireland in America. Yeah. In Ireland, they were known as the Tuatha Dé Danann kings yeah. there. In America, their symbol's an eagle, and that's the symbol that the American coat of arms, the National Security Agency, is, is the eagle's tribe of Dan. Um, basically, this group, this genetic group, we were all descendants of the tribe of Dan. I'm seeing a lot of these, um, a lot of the sub-projects of Mannequin um, in, in films and in X-Men comics, they're, they're taking bits out of it, um, basically. Can you know about like, current? Um, yeah, there's a, just a new X-Men comic come out called The Tomorrow People. Uh, the Tomorrow People is The Tomorrow People was, of course, a psychic uh, TV program back in the 1970s. Right. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, they called The Tomorrow People and they weren't known as psychic people. Right. And there was a science fiction. Right. They called that very name, The Tomorrow People. Right. Because basically The Tomorrow People was the name of the project at the CRC-1 base underneath Westminster. It was um, the remote viewing project. Yeah. It was called The Tomorrow People. And they had special psychic ability. Um, um, but yeah, the remote viewing and remote influencing. That's an example of television, children's television being used to actually mm. inform of current secret projects. Mm. Um, well, there's no other way you can find out. Well, basically, you've, um, I don't know whether it's part of a public education program to get people slowly desensitized to it, or possibly. Um, it's just an inside joke by the NSA. Probably you know, the they're saying, "Oh, you know, we're putting it right in your face. What's going on? Yeah. You're too dumb. You can't even notice." Yeah, I think it's more like you. I'd probably go with the latter. Yeah. Um, but I mean, 
this, um, these NSA guys that have helped me, um, basically I signed a contract with one of them, an NSA non-disclosure agreement. Uh, I can show you a copy of it at some point. But on section 5, it says um, any classified information that you're given, um, if you if you create any films or books, comics from it, you have to give a percentage to the National Security Agency. Oh, so they'll let you, they'll let you uh, talk about it, provided they get a hand? Um, so it's not like the Official Secrets Act, then? It's like an American version of the Official Secrets Act, yeah, basically. You do talk about it, we want the royalty. Yeah, basically, yeah. You know, like I said, they're putting out a lot of these real black projects in films and... You know, it's, uh, on the basis nobody really believes it and it's just a film. Mm. I had, I've seen certain things over the years which I don't feel comfortable talking about now. Right. But um, I do know 100% they've got this uh, biowarfare weapon. So if you, had, if you had a suitcase or something and you open it up it would blow up in your face or something like that? I don't know how it works exactly. But I know um, it could possibly just be an airborne thing come out. But I don't know, I understand, but I know what it does, I know the effects, I've seen the effects of it in, in a biowarfare test. Is it test. permanent? Is it a permanent thing? Permanent, yeah. Uh, it affects the brain? affects the brain. It There's a nerve gas of some kind? I don't know exactly what it is, but I know the, I've seen the effects of it um, in a biowarfare test in Project Mannequin. Is that on a film or on real people? Uh, no, I've seen real people a uh, biowarfare test. And those people are. Those people were. Uh, they were possibly homeless people. They were locked in a room, the sealed room. Uh, I get really twitchy talking about it. Can you know of any other kind of experiments like that? Where they've used people uh, like that? I saw. Um, and I, I, over the years, this was basically. I went through four military abductions last year. Last year? Last year, that's yeah. Two, that's the year 2006. 2006. Military abduction or in my lab? Yeah, my lab. Right. So can you describe what happened to those? Four, um, four different ones. Um, I've gone through quite a few my labs over the years, but I've never gone through four in a year before. Um, basically, um, they needed to get certain genetic procedures in place before my 30th birthday. Because when you uh, hit 30, you start to get a lot of your memories back. Right. I think neural pathways open up in the brain. So is that how you're able to talk about this now? Yeah, I still get really twitchy talking about things, uh, certain things I've seen over the years. I think if you can concentrate on what you personally witnessed, that would yeah, be good. Okay. Um, in one of the military abductions towards the end of 2006, um, What's actually happened, that how I, I, I know some of the bases I was at. One of them was at the Monsoon 1 facility. Which one? Monsoon 1, well, it's below RAF Lackenhe, it's about 90 right. miles of London. I yeah. was there in a, in a place called the Proteus Labs. The, Pro, that's just the Proteus Labs? That's what they called the base yeah. called Monsoon 1. Monsoon 1. Underneath RAF right. Lackenhe, yeah. yeah. Um, basically, how I got to these places was um, because I'm implanted. Um, I'm still under a lot of mind control, but yeah. I can be triggered to do things, and I'll go and do it against my will, and I won't remember doing them afterwards. Yeah. So I have vague memories like of it. Manchurian candidate? Yeah, that's what Project Mannequin is, to create man Manchurian candidates. Yeah. So basically... Um, well, what kind of implant are you talking about? Are you talking about these little tiny things? Or? Uh, cranial implants. I've got um, one little implant here on the back, one on the right-hand side. There's actually a wire. Couple, it's a copper wire that yeah. goes round, connects to an implant there. Right. Got bio uh, no, it's actually it's next to my jaw there. Right. And a little bio um, monitor there. Right. Possibly other things I don't know about. Is there any way that that can be verified by like X-ray or anything? I'm looking to um, get private X-ray at um, some point, and I'll, I'll want these to. You know, or is the material that's being used some kind of material which isn't metallic so it's very close to body tissue so it's not visible on x-ray? I think some of it is like crystal yeah. and uh, body tissue but I, I know some of the implants do show up on x-ray and others don't so I have to wait and see. Well I was getting um, a few years back I was getting really bad nosebleeds and uh, intense headaches that were ruining my life. I couldn't watch TV. And I was actually I had to sit in a dark room every night for about three months at night because light would hurt my eyes. And, uh, is that like a shingles effect that hurts your eyes? 
Yeah, it was a nightmare. I felt like uh, kind of drills were going into my eyes. It was like ruining my life. Some real heavy painkillers. And um, basically, I went for an x ray, um, but they wouldn't show me the results of it. And then um, after that, this plastic material came out my nose, and I was blowing it. Yeah. It stayed there, but then it disintegrated a couple of days later. But it was like hard plastic. And once that came out, the pain, the pressure went. But I mean, Possibly where these where this stuff is happening, these procedures are taking place is, um, for instance, the Proteus labs, the Genex labs on Deep Monsoon One. Basically, what what happened at the end of 2006, and um, this is around uh, August, uh, the, was the latter part of August. Something happened at the beginning of August. Well, but I concentrate on this. Um, fell asleep at half two um, in the morning. I woke up 45 minutes later, uh, got dressed, headed out the front door, uh, down to the local cliffs in the middle of nowhere. Um, basically there was a firefly that waiting for me, uh, a black triangle disc, yeah. which is a abduction craft. And That's uh, the British version of the stealth? Yeah. Like, but it hovers? Yeah, black, a very small, very small craft. Yeah. And uh, next thing I know, I'm walking up a ramp on there. There's a lot of special forces guys in it, dressed in black uniform with no insignia on it. Yeah. And I went in and there's a ramp at the back. I walked in, on, on, onto it. There's like a... The main section is like this. Yeah. And there's seats, six seats on each side. They face each other like a military plane. Like a passenger jet when yeah. board, like a military plane. Opposite each other. And then at the front there's a cockpit with two seats in it. And um, I took my seat, I took my place down on the uh, on the right hand side at the end. I was in like a trance sort of drug state by then because yeah. I was under a lot you know, tr triggered to do that. And um, you know, took off, flew, didn't see where we were going, aimed down. Windows, you got windows inside this thing? The only window is at the front of the cockpit. And there's no door. But I couldn't when you're in the lot of things you can't turn your head. You actually, you can only look a certain direction. It's like you're under total, you're like a robot in total yeah. control. And um, and then I, we went down. Next thing I know was um, <coughs> we're in a room, um, a large room. There was a cage on the in the left-hand corner, and I, I couldn't, I could see the side of the bars, but I couldn't look to see what was in the cage. And then there was. Um, Basically, there was a door there, and a door there. There's basically a door on the right hand side, there, and uh, there was uh, three doctor type, scientist types in white lab coats, and there was uh, two other people, and we were lined up against the wall like this. Yeah. And, um, there was another room, just next to, next to on the left. They were taken in, and there were three pods in that room, lined up. They were almost, they looked like kind of small telephone boxes, but they were humming with like ELF, like radio waves, like that. And um, they, they took the woman, the woman that's next to me, sort of, she was about 40, blonde hair. They took her, and as the pod was, as as it was humming, as she was getting led to it, she started to like, seem to be having an orgasm, right. uh, and started to get like really sexually aroused, and um, as she got in, she was like begging to be put in it, yeah. and she got closer, and um, through my research I found they've got these um, machines that um, artificially enhance and the or orgasmic state, well basically psychic energy and sexual energy is one and the same. Um, so they're increasing sexual energy and that increases the psychic energy, yeah. that's basically it. And then they put her in, uh, she was in it for about a minute, then they took her out and then they put me in it. Yeah. Um, took me out and then the doctor said uh, to me, oh we've just installed a Proteus program into you. And these are the Proteus labs, that's what he said. Because right. um, in a lot of the military abductions they explain to me what's going on. While they're happening, they tell me what's going on. They say this is the net, this is called this, this is where in this place. So what is the Proteus 
project or the program they put into you? What, what it, it's, 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 it's like a, it's a super soldier project. Um, yeah. Protus is a Greek word and he's the first of a kind. Yeah. Um, they're creating like a new race of sleepers, Mancurian candidate of yeah. psychic abilities. Yeah. They want to use them for the new world order. Yeah. Just, they're waiting to go into action and certain yeah. things happen. And then um, just after we were, came out of the pods, we were taken into the room and um, the scientist walked over to the door on the right and opened it and brought out these um, deformed humans, uh, like horrible genetics or sort of lumps on their heads and like sort of elongated arms, things like that. They, they were human, they were aliens, they were just genetically deformed. And then they, we were up against the wall again and um, they brought them in front of us and the doctor said to the one that was opposite me, he said, y you have to go close to his face and speak to him in his face or he will um, go into denial that this is happening and the programming won't take properly. Right. So this thing come, this deformed human come close to my face started swearing at me in my face. And uh, I could speak English and um, I like had a British accent. Yeah. And um, I was trying to shout, like, tell it to yeah, fuck off. Yeah. But I couldn't speak. Was, like this, I was like paralysed. I couldn't speak. And um, okay, um, yeah. Basically, these uh, deformed humans, they look like John Merrick, the Elephant Man. And um, after this experience happened, I started researching what Proteus means. I'd never heard the word before. I found out that it's a Greek name. It means the first of a kind. And um, then so this is August of 2006. Yeah, late latter part of August. Yeah. yeah. And um, I basically, and then I, they look a little like John Merrick, the Elephant Man. So I, I started researching a bit about John Merrick, and I found out that his condition was called the Proteus Syndrome, uh -huh. and it had been um, coined by a Jewish doctor. And this is what these things look like. And then Barry King told me that RF Lackanif is connected to the uh, Project Mannequin. Yeah. You know, the base there, they take a lot of the people there for programming genetic enhancements. And um, I said, uh, I spoke to an NSA contact and I said, um, you know, I was in the Proteus labs. Uh, you know, I was taken there by aircraft. Uh, 2006, I said to him, you know, where's the Proteus Labs? And, he's, and he, he checked his computer and he said, oh, it's um, a facility called Monsoon One. Yeah. And I said, oh, where's Monsoon One? Because that's underneath RF Lackanee. And then Barry King had told me RF Lackanee is part of Project Mannequin. Uh, so that's one of the four abductions last year. Yeah, yeah. Um. Basically, there was harassment in, um, every, like, in the evenings by MIBs. Um, what what do they look like? These were just, again, special forces guys that were dressed in black uniforms and no insignia on. The same guys that I, the same type of uniforms I saw the guys in the Firefly wearing. Um, there was, I stayed at a friend's in um, Southampton just before this. And it was, we stayed in a jewellery shop, he lived, he's got a jewellery shop there, we stayed there. And, uh, you know, we, we were there and we were, we were going off, like, looking at military bases and, like, off sort of orb, taking photographs of orbs and stuff like that. And uh, I left, and that night, um, he was asleep in the shop, and these two guys in these black military uniforms stood outside his shop, and they, um... He, what they were doing was, um, he, he's got these metal shutters in front of his shop and um, they're not electronically controlled, you have to pull them up and down with your hands and they were standing there and they were using some sort of psychic abilities and they were lifting the shutters up telepathically the shutters were um, they're standing there and the shutters were coming up and then going and crashing down and coming up and going and crashing down. What age? people believe 
the two big. guys. Yeah. Uh, one of them, one of them was really big. One of them was about six foot three, like really muscular. He was a white guy. They said they they ran their thirties. Another guy was smaller, Asian, and. Um, but Sahel was asleep, but what happened was um, all the neighbours came out, it's a small little Asian community yeah. in Southampton, and all the neighbours came out and, uh, you know, what's the noise about? And they ended up 40 neighbours outside the shop. When all the neighbours came out, these guys uh, slipped off, but the shutters c carried on coming up and coming down, like, and, and they did that for an hour just going up and down themselves yeah. and then the uh, police ended up getting called and um, the police were trying to get everyone to calm down because everyone's freaking out it's like a real quite a uh, muslim religious community everyone's really freaking out and the police said no these are on electronic shutters they've got to be and they said the battery should run out because it's been doing it for an hour now and they and they said no there's no electronic control you can only do it by hand because this isn't right and um, you told them this? No, this was um, the neighbours said this to the police. Yeah. Yeah, because they know they know my friend. Yeah. They could go in the shop. They carried on for about two hours, going up and down, slowing down. In the end, it stopped, and they went. Um, and then the police came to uh, my friend's next day, and were asking him questions. And then they checked the camera, CCT, and the video yeah, footage had shut down time the two guys in black come outside and then uh, my friend was all freaked out he went to stay at his mum's and then uh, the next night they got a report of another disturbance outside and uh, the police pulled up in a van and there was four mummies outside the shop outside the shop dancing four mummies in, in um, you know like proper mummies yeah. outside like in a circle dancing outside the shop and the, the neighbours about there was about 20 eyewitnesses saw the mummies outside the shop and they danced for about 10 minutes the police were too scared to get out of the van that's in front of the shop then they just went poof and just disappeared in my understanding that's like nsa hologram project bluebeam it's like psychological yeah. warfare stuff they use a lot of holographic stuff just disappeared. In my understanding, that's like NSA hologram, Project Bluebeam, it's like psychological yeah. warfare stuff. They use a lot of holographic stuff. Could you explain more about Project Bluebeam? It's the holograms, you know, you can project um, a group in, of people. Is into the mind or into the... You know, you can project it, um, you know, holographic technology. Project a group of people walking on there and they'll look solid, three-dimensional. They'll be holograms, you know. Where would the projectors be housed in order to do this? I mean, with the um, projecting. Possibly, do they have to set things up first. I don't know exactly where it's projected from. Possibly satellite. Possibly um, a van parked somewhere. I don't know, but I know the holograms are real, very realistic. Keep Yeah, I just like, basically, Project Mannequin, a lot of it is about harnessing radio waves, brain waves, and it's about sending them out through um, televisions, mobile phones, and mobile phone marks. Yeah. It's like um, they're sending out frequencies, because everybody's got a telepathic receiver, like a radio receiver, yeah. the penile gland in the brain. So they're using the broadcast communication system as a mechanism for mind control or mind implantation of ideas or what? Yeah, but what they're doing is they're dampening down the consciousness there. Um, to put it, what I, my, my main message is about the missing children and about the children that are being abused and satanically murdered in the facilities. So basically they're taking children into the bases, because there's like 25,000 children going missing a year in this country. Um, and what they're doing is they're, um, they've got brain implants and they're, ri they're ritually murdering them. They're like, what kind of ritual? Um, they're right? cutting their throats, they're cutting their hands off. They're um, things based around that in rituals. And at the time of death, 
they're recording the um, brain waves of the children onto a computer How they doing that? Um, by radio wave yeah. because brain waves and radio waves are the same thing so at the time they, they're recording those frequencies from the brain implant onto a computer and then what they're doing is they're sending that radio wave that frequency out through um, phone masks through satellite and TVs sending it out um, and it's causing the crime rate to go up it's causing people's anxiety levels to go up and what they can do is they can um, it's causing sexual abuse drug abuse alcohol abuse to go up and what they can do is by the means of death that the child they murder the children they can attack um, the population's chakras so when they cut a child's throat and record that type of death uh, from that frequency from their brain implant onto the computer, they send that out and that stops people being able to talk to each other properly from the heart. It's the effect of the throat shut. So I'm jogging past the woods there a couple of weeks before, like every night, and on about four, I think it was about four separate nights, he had screams coming out of the woods. This was even before yeah. the... Uh, two children were found and then the military sealed the area off and then like in um, the new forest there's children's bodies being found there with the skin removed and things like that like you like like the mutilation problem. yeah and like eyeballs removed and basically the lymphatic system removed like the tongues the eyeballs the genitalia well these um, I'm connected to an intelligence group called group 5a is part of British intelligence connected to the United Nations. Uh, they basically, um, a few years back, they were um, up in the Brecon Beacons area, and there's an yeah. underground NSA base under yeah. the Brecon Beacons. Yeah. They were. Um, so the experimentation base there is not. Yeah, Brecon Beacons. They were around the area, and they were um, being caught to the scene of camper vans around the area. People were missing, and. Uh, disappeared from the camper vans and they, they basically got called to one scene and there'd been two bodies found, a young boy and a young girl there and um, they went to the scene, they had to seal off the area, military style yeah. and their eyeballs had been removed, half the skin was missing, uh, tongues, genitals and uh, basically the, the group 5-8 guys showed the photographs to a friend of mine and he was a researcher who was meant to get the story out but then he uh, he had his house burned down oh, after that. Who who is doing the mutilations? Is it I, a government program or what? I the information that I've got, I'd go with its um, factions in the greys and the reptilians that are working with the NSA and the bases. I think they're harvesting the lymphatic system and it, this gets into like um, the dulcy material yeah. where greys have been seen in, in vats with human body parts being mixed around. They're basically absorbing the protein mixture through osmosis through their skin. I think they've got some kind of genetic disorder that the digestive system doesn't work properly. So are the greys and the reptilians based here? You know, like, like a dulcy facility here? Um, well, Barry King says he's seen he saw greys and reptilians at the Ithaca Park. Have you seen things? I've, like not, I've never seen any greys or reptilians at the base. I've seen things that um, look like small kind of gargoyles and they were wearing robes, but they weren't greys. And do you think that they were actually uh, earth, earthly based, genetically altered human beings, or do you think they were actually. Uh, What's your opinion of what those beings were? How many did you see? Well, I saw three of them. Um, I mean, that's a long story in itself. You can go into that if you want. Yeah, well, we've got a couple of minutes if you can allude to it. Okay. Um, that was basically... Um, well, in 1981, in the, uh, when it was taken through Green and Common, I, I saw things in cages, like large wolves or dogs there. Um, but I think they were genetic creations, military creations. But these things, um, basically, this was on the 4th of August last year. Um, again, I went out again to down to the cliffs, 
and there was a firefly waiting for me again. This has been happening for years. Yeah. And it turns out, under hypnosis, I've gone out regularly and met them. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a good idea to set that up as a surveillance point and catch it on film one night. Yeah. Does it happen in daylight or in No, uh, not late at night, late at night. And there's been a lot of activity in my house, bedroom. Um, okay. Small greys appearing, reptilians yeah. appearing. But now I can't even sleep in the house by myself. I'm like 30 years old. Are they projected? Like mannequin? Are they uh, blue beam projections? That's what I thought, but this, um, these seem very real. They could be holographic projections. They seem very real. Um, I've seen so you had those abductions last year. What about this year? Uh, it's been close encounters at night. Uh, small greys, tall greys, reptilians. The, the PLFs have got the round eyes and the, the real greys have got the oval eyes. Yeah. The ones I've seen in my bedroom have got the oval eyes and then wake up paralysed and they're trying to shout or move but you can't. And you know, the situation's got so bad that this is happening once every couple of weeks. I'm seeing something in the room. Is there any way, is there any way that you can afford that, leave a camera running? Around? Yeah, I've wanted to get um, some camera set up. I've wanted to actually take a Geiger camera because I can yeah. see um, I can see radio waves, I can physically see radiation because yeah. that's part of my training project, Mannequin. I can tune my eyes in like a digital camera and there's very high levels of radiation in the room. Yeah. But th what this is, this is called non-ionizing radiation. Yeah, that's it. This is non-ionizing radiation. It doesn't get in your cells and make you sick. Yeah. Um, what they're doing is they're, they're using extremely high frequency radiation and punching a hole, possibly from underground bases, and then coming into the room. Now, just for the record here, we're in Cornwall, yeah. so you're talking about everything happening here in Cornwall. Around Cornwall in St. Ives, yeah. St. Ives in Cornwall. I think it, the Project Mannequin has a life plan for you. Every school you go to, every university, everywhere you live, it's planned by the project for you. And I think they wanted to have me down here in the middle of nowhere by the cliffs, because I've as I say, I've regularly gone down to the cliffs late at night and been picked up in military abductions. 